My friends, good morning. My husband, Topper Roth, and I have been members here for six years, still newbies in this crowd. We never even met the legendary Jim Robinson. Like many UUs, I grew up within a top-down religion. Creed and rules were not to be questioned. Rarely did I hear anything in the pulpit that spoke to my heart. And at the end of each service, everybody raced for the door. I first learned I was a closeted UU during our internship years in Milwaukee. Topper and I were accidental tourists searching for a mutually acceptable wedding venue. Like many of us, I found myself weeping through the first service, astonished to learn that my religion, a religion existed that could speak to me in such a profoundly personal way. After we settled in the Philadelphia area to raise our family in 1985, we joined the Mainline Unitarian Church. Although we'd moved to Philly to take advantage of all that a big city offered, that church became our primary community. We volunteered as Sunday school teachers and youth advisors, took parts in dinners, auctions, retreats, women's groups, small group ministry, choir, and countless, countless committees. In our final years there, we had a blast as foundational members of the congregation's house band, Red Beans and Rice. Our two kids came up through the UU Sunday School program. I rejoiced hearing my five-year-old daughter recite, we are Unitarian Universalists, the Church of the Open Minds, the Helping Hands, and the Loving Hearts. In middle school, my son stood in front of the congregation and told the story of his near drowning at age four. Although I'd never heard of him speak of it before. <clears throat> Later, the kids loved shocking people by saying they learned about sex at church. <laughs> As we moved toward retirement on the Cape after 30 years, it was hard to leave our UU community behind. But after visiting churches on Cape Cod, First Parish Brewster was the clear choice. Although smaller in size, it was bursting with energy and music and all around good vibes. From the start, people here went out of their way to welcome us. We signed the book and in less than a year, I joined the membership committee. We made music with OMG and joined a covenant group. I'm now in my fifth year as a co-facilitator and also serve on leadership development, the LGBTQ welcoming congregation, write relations, and sing in the choir. We've hosted church-sponsored dinners, costume parties, kayak outings, and film nights. I look forward to meeting new people and trying out new activities. During our six years here, I've come to know and love many, many amazing people committed to social justice and the arts. Topper and I found immense personal support just when we needed it. When our son went through a bout of cancer, and when our grandson suffered a stroke at birth. <clears throat> As a congregation, we've carried on through the upheavals of interim ministers, the turmoil of COVID in isolation, and the heartbreaking loss of our settled minister's beloved infant daughter. When the time comes for me to cross over, I feel comforted by the idea that this community will remember and celebrate my life. So, I've come this far without mentioning money. But I believe we should all do our part to support this congregation financially through our annual pledges, capital campaigns, the weekly collection, food cards, and other fundraising activities. We are FPBUU. Let us be known for our open minds, our helping hands, and our loving and generous hearts.